So let's get right into this. Uh, of course, today is October the 14th, I believe. Actually, let me say I'm probably in the future, right? It's October 12th, 2012. And of course, this is the Resistance Collective Study Group, Superfoods for Superhumans. And of course, yesterday we had another amazing show in the Collective Study Group talking about total regeneration. So today's show is, of course, going to be more of a continuation of that. And as we continuously run through some of the topics that we have as group topics, it's going to extend, it's going to continue, continue to expand you more in understanding exactly how all of this stuff is interconnected, meaning that the superfood and and the total regeneration and the occult systems and all that is really one major topic but what we're going to have to do is split it up into different portions so that way people start to to be entertained by what they prefer first and then they can start seeing how it really connects into everything and that also gives you a very um, good understanding of how anything works in this world if you push all the way through whatever you're doing if you go all the all the way with it you experience some connection with all of your vehicles at that point so let me get grab my notes here of course remember today is really about superfood but we're definitely going to have a, a spiritual and occult um, perspective on how this is all affecting us so again let me grab my notes here Okay, all right, so first and foremost, we must talk about a couple things before we talk about superfood, which is basically how to get superfoods to really work for you. I think that a lot of people deliver an excellent amount of information in regards to the different supplements through nature that are available to us, but there's not as much emphasis put on the state that you have to put yourself in before you can fully benefit off your higher senses. So let me first explain it very similar to uh, how it would happen if you go into a mall and let's say you're trying out perfume and cologne or you, you go to a store, you're trying out essence oils and, 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 the, um, and oils, or, uh, fragrance oils. So what happens is, is that let's say you've been given like four or five things to smell and then all of a sudden your nose starts to not be able to differentiate or have make a difference between one fragrance from another. So then they bring you the coffee beans to which kind of like reset your, your nose and then you start all over again, right? So with the body, it's, all, it's more of the same way. And then there's another thing that also happens in the physical reality that I also cite as an example, and this is people that have a very high tolerance to alcohol or drugs. Those who say, man, you know, I, you can't drink me under the table, or someone says, man, I can smoke like five or six blunts and I don't feel anything. That's per, in, in, the, in the subtle sense world, that's not a good thing. In the ethereal world, that's not a good thing. Of course, in the dense world, it seems to be very popular how long you can go and how much you can really toxify your body and before you drop. But of course, in, in the spiritual world, it's basically how well you can remove toxins from your body so that you can rise. So what happens is, is that for many people, you have to really make, or for everyone, I guess, you have to ask yourself, how subtle do I really feel? Do I have a sixth sense that is uh, activated? Do I, immediately when I feel like something is in my body that is not doing my body right, am I able to isolate it down to something that I drank, even something that I, I may have breathed? Or, or something that may have uh, uh, been exposed to, like dust and things of this nature. So is your body so sensitive to the point that you can actually tell what is really going on with it from time to time and you can isolate it exactly? Now, if you could say yes to that question all the way around. Okay, uh, I think um, we should be fine. I'm seeing a, a message in here that says that there may be some uh, situations, but maybe not. Uh, I'm sure that we're, we're clear. In fact, let me turn this up real quick and listen. Okay, yeah, we're clear. I, again, I just have to make sure that everyone is coming through clear because we're testing out a lot of this equipment and this is about the third try. So we, we're going to have to get used to it. So let me continue. So what happens is, is that if you have, if, so if you answer yes to that question and you say, well, yeah, I'm super subtle, then you're now ready to move into many of the more 
uh, subtle superfoods that actually give you those heightened abilities. But if you could say no to that question, it's like, man, I, I really don't feel anything. Like, I don't feel Ethereum gold. I don't feel Ethereum red. I don't, I don't think they're doing anything. I'll, I'll explain to you 100%. They are doing something because I've been able to benefit off those abilities and many other individuals have. But if for some reason you don't feel them, that means that you need to work on internal cleansing. And here today we bought the internal cleansing kit, not for you to see it as an advertisement as something that you can buy, but to get an idea of what it takes to really cleanse the body. And this is gonna be important from the stance that on the internet there's all this clean the liver, clean the heart, or, and clean the or colon, and, and clean the gallbladder. But one thing that they're not signing most of the time is that you don't do that in order because, you, you have to do that, excuse me, you have to do that in order you can't do it in the order that you feel like, oh, I can get access to this magnesium and this, this apple juice, but this other stuff right now, I can't even find that or I can't even afford that. Because what ends up happening is, is you'll flush the toxins from one of your organs into another one of your organs. So the way the real internal cleanse is designed is to actually flush out all your toxins the proper way so that in the end that you actually discharge those toxins rather than them just getting stuck and actually damaging an organ that may be working properly so remember we can't have hazardly and this is the difference between um, the neophyte and the adept you can't just go and just take everything and just pop it all in your body to see what it does that's the way a child handles things an adept has to do the thorough research and understand the timing the weights and the measures behind what they're doing to get maximized results and this is why the adept gets results versus the neophytes like ah, I don't feel anything and timed it right on the time of when having a party with friends and changing pH balances with alcohol and things of that nature. So remember, when you're performing the great work on yourself, total alchemy, you have to really be methodical as the alchemist for the benefits that you're looking for. We'll get into more of why of that. Why is that the case later? So if you notice here, and let's just go through this very briefly, you'll see that this internal cleansing kit and the one below here is a colon cleansing kit works on the lungs, the blood, and the skin, and, uh, the, and also there's a colon cleanse inside of here. So the reason why is, is that all of these glands, and the, uh, especially with your lymphatic system, have basically tubes that get clogged and filters that get clogged. Basically, it's easier to look at it as a filter. So you don't run around uh, for, for months not changing the filters on your car oil. So it's the same thing with your body. You, don't, you shouldn't run around your whole life without changing your filter. And, but if you fail to change your filter, first of all, everything about how you see everything is gonna be distorted. So remember, the first part of seeing things the way they really are, really it comes from within. It doesn't come from the external reality. It, in, in a sense, you'll never really see any apparition or any extraterrestrial or UFO or anything if you're very dense. So remember, it happens internally first, and that's why I talked about last show that there's a lot of biological war going on. So we're gonna talk about how to overcome the biological war, but remember that the biologic, what the biological war is is that a, a, a kind of food can be used in a sense to, to control your senses. And let's talk about that a little bit more in regards to like hot foods, especially if your dosha is not for hot foods, meaning your Ayurvedic calibration is not for you to be eating hot foods, but you keep throwing these peppers into the system, right? So then this, this means that you are angry most of the time and agitated most of the time. You never really get any sleep because you're agitated. And they also talk about, even for anyone, no matter what dosha you're on, using things like black pepper, which are basically like small razors and lodge themselves into the intestine walls and then cause an inflammation or cause an agitation these are the, some of the basic things that you have to really be concerned about when you're, talk, when you're talking about getting into higher states of consciousness. Because if you're agitated all the time, then you have it in, internally, it also will manifest in the physical reality, and then you have no time to really tap into the true part of self. So let's get that clear that the biological warfare is using foods, especially the meats, mainly the meats and the artificial flavors and colors and all this stuff, the soda, McDonald's, all these different things, it's the biological war. So realistically, it, it, is, it is calibrated to control you from an emotional level. 
I'll say that again. The biological warfare where the, where the, when the food affects the stomach, then from an emotional level, if it's the hot food, then you're angry. But if it's an artificial food, then you're fake. So <laughs> you are what you eat. That's really what this is going to boil into as we continuously uh, expand into understanding uh, what we need to do here. So we have to be responsible for what we put in our mouths. Now, now notice the baby. If you let the baby crawl all around the floor, the baby will eat things off the floor. <laughs> and you're like, no, get that out of your mouth. So this same kind of behavior when drinking something like a soda, logic and knowledge and adepthood, etc., tells you soda's not good for you. But the baby is just going to drink the soda because it tastes good. You see what I mean? So that's what we're talking about with why a lot of people don't experience this higher level and higher state of consciousness is because that they're constantly really wrestling against the flesh, as we'll call it, or the, the animalistic side of their nature, which is the body that they've been put in, the great test. So, and I'll show you, especially in this conversation today, how that all really connects with the animalistic nature and even the, the eyes of animals, the shapes of those eyes and the shapes of many of the portals that are, are, are within us, which we call the chakra centers. So, to to wrap this up really briefly, you really have to flush the system first before you can get the full effects of any kind of superfood because most superfoods are very subtle. So some people go running off with the goji berries and uh, of course these are goji berries or um, something like the acai and then they, they take this stuff and then nothing happens. And they're like, man, I don't, I don't feel like uh, nothing's going on. I feel tired even. And it's because the body filters are so clogged up, they cannot tap into the subtle feelings that are associated with these superfoods. So let's get that clear. The second thing here is um, understand, I had a really great conversation uh, last night with someone that I, I really uh, respect and admire. We always can get really good conversations going on. We talked for about two hours just cracking into all of what the controllers are really doing so that way we can find real solutions. And we came into some very, uh, very interesting information, especially based on the revelation that we had yesterday during the show, which is that the sun in the sky is the external correspondence to our soul inside, a dynamo or an energy generator, neither male nor female. The absolute in itself, meaning that the sun is a replication of an, an, an absolute or a, basically a perpetual energy. So what that also brought us into is how things are moving, going to be moving faster and faster as long as that we're on this particular program because what the controllers have done is the controllers or so-called controllers as I say have, are continuing to speed up the program for the individuals inside of the matrix while they're still operating on an old, very slow, very repetitious, very reptilian program. So what happens but in the physical reality, though, is we get these computers, which are going faster and faster and faster. Everyone says, oh, the phone moves faster. I, I like iPhone 5. It moves faster. So everyone wants to go fast, but not knowing where they're going. And this equals, when there's a collision, an even greater collision than would have, would have been caused if you weren't moving as fast or, or moving a lot slower or steady or constant. Then you can see what's coming and divert it or go around it. Or you see what I mean? So you at least have an opportunity to do that. In the reality, what they're, what they're doing to humanity is they're actually making people speed up. Now you don't have much time. You've got to go to work, and then you've got to go here, and then you're trying to cram this in the day and all that, and then it just seems like a big race. So they call this, this is the race. And they say, go races the people. Let's see who can go the fastest, right? As long as they continue to have us in competition with one another. But what we need to be more of than fast is constant. See, constant is you can always count on it to come through. Like, I guess the sun, every day it comes up constantly. So, because what happens if you run really fast and really reckless, you'll run out of energy. Whoever starts the marathon, like running all, all their energy and then they can't even complete the race. So what happens is, is that if you're going too fast, you're gonna get yourself into a situation or you may have gotten yourself into a situation that you're lodged into. Because that's the other thing, when you're going fast and you actually hit something, you lodge into it. So what it's like for most individuals right now is that they're actually attempting to pull themselves out of something. They're not just coming from the standpoint of, hey, I got a clean slate. I don't know anything about spirituality or any language programs or any of that, basically the baby state. Teach me truth. 
That's not the state that people are coming from. People are coming from states of uh, physical, mental, and spiritual abuse. So I would also allow, uh, tell people to do keep that in mind also when interacting, especially with other individuals on the resistance platform, and also interacting with myself is that in, in all of this, and I learned something very powerful today as, as came out of my mouth, but I was speaking with Regina, and I said, you know, with a doctor, a doctor doesn't become a doctor if he's not dealing with anyone or she's not dealing with anyone sick. Like, what kind of doctor doesn't deal with sick patients? So let us get it very clear. If someone's coming to you for spiritual help, this means that they're actually sick. This is something that we're not taking into account because we go and we tell these individuals, hey, you should listen to me, you need to wake up. But the reason why they're not waking up, they're, they're not awake, excuse me, is because they're sick. So remember that when you're dealing with them because if you get some type of backlash or you get something that you don't expect, it could be very similar to the, the outbreak of something that a patient is being affected with. Further, to, to truly be a good teacher, to, good doctor, surgeon, whatever you want to call it, you have to make sure that you install the proper principles and the quarantines that are necessary to not infect other people with another person's problem. And I'm telling everyone this because you all play this role in your life every day where you consult with other individuals, you give them advice, but make sure that whatever occurs with certain individuals doesn't bleed over into other individuals that, are, that you are also taking care of because you can get them more sick with the other person's sickness, you see? So this is called cross-contamination in, um, in, in the medical study, in, but in the spiritual study, this is called when you, you know, you're not doing proper astral cleansing, which is another show. So what happens here is, is that if you, again, feel that your body is really dense, if you want a brute force way to actually activate many of the senses that you are installed with in the five senses, but not to their height, then cleanse. Because all of the organs, which I'm gonna show you today, are your senses and give you the perception of everything. I know that's for many people a no-brainer, but today we're gonna to see it even from a different level. So to begin this, I wanted to um, start with looking at once again a chart that was posted yesterday. And this was one of the, the charts that was up on the screen while I was, was having this conversation yesterday. And it just kept making me laugh because each time we were talking about a specific part of what was going on in the matrix, I was able to see it on this chart. And this chart is not the picture that the first picture that is posted underneath the live stream. It is actually the, and let me turn this, uh, this the audio on Skype off just so I won't get that constant beeping for a quick second for me. Okay. All right. Okay, excuse me everyone, I'm just um, readjusting a couple things. Okay, I just wanted to turn those notifications off and uh, get this on uh, Do Not Disturb for a moment, just so we're not getting those, on, those beeping noises and things like that that Skype has. Okay, let me readjust my mic here. Okay, everything's great. All right, so again, if you go into the live stream platform, of course, forward slash Astro Quest, forward slash Superfoods, you see I've posted some stuff earlier today just to make sure that it's here so that I wouldn't have to do the, the posting during the call. But if you go to from the top, the second picture, so this would be below the astrochemical, physiological, and chromatic chart. <laughs> says a lot, but again, you're going to see how all this connects. It's so simple. And this is what you have to understand. If what I'm about to show you is going to prove to you that these people that are the so-called controllers have no interest in telling you what is going to get you into a higher state of expansion. So thus, you have not really entered into that yet. Meaning that now the glass is truly truly half full now, meaning that there is something that so many people have been writing about and saying that they've accomplished and saying it's such a beautiful, wonderful thing, and they're of course only imagining it, but that is actually real and can be achieved. And I'm gonna show you why there's been this huge bottleneck with why you haven't experienced it. Because remember, most people that are experiencing higher state of consciousness are not walking around the mall or at some ball game. They're actually involved in doing things themselves. They're not waiting for input they're actually doing output all the time. So 
as we talked about yesterday, again, the sun does not sleep. So when you have to find something to do, your soul has to find something to do all the time, then it, you know, it, it creates so much more of what you're absorbing daily. So that's why we also want to get your filters clean. Now remember, your filters are working already. But what happens is when you sent, bring something through a dirty filter, you are misinterpreted. It's guaranteed to happen. This is not something that may happen. No, I have a good sense of, of uh, understanding, brother, and it's not something that would occur with me. Stop. That, that's ego. The real person says, look, man, I'm trying to activate. I can't throw lightning from my hands right now, but I perceive that I probably could, seeing that some of the energy that I, I've actually tapped into at certain points. But it's obvious to me that I need to get to that level. Can you teach me how to get to that level? And I can say to the person, sure, I can teach you how to get to that level. The first thing is you got to understand that filters are dirty. You're in a bio, bio supercomputer, basically. If you, it's organic. What's happened is, is that because of your miscare, which they always encourage you in society to not take care of yourself, take care of them, but don't take care of yourself, you see? So what happens is, is that with this, um, with your body, it's been neglected. Your ship has been neglected and it's, it's changed from a ship to a cage. It's very similar to, let's say we have this huge spaceship, it's very nice stuff. Then we crash land on Nebula R13 and we're stuck inside the ship. <laughs> It's not working and we're actually also still inside of it. So that's, that's the state of where the human body is now. It's basically a crash landed ship. So to start repairs, it's a good thing you have repair facilities. At least we landed on a planet that actually has the substances that are necessary in order to reactivate us again. And so of course that is within the nature because everything within the universe is just a continuous redundification of the soul. So everything that is necessary to repair the soul or meaning put back its other half, repair the soul, is located within the holographic realities in which the soul is projecting. Now soul again is the Latin name for the sun. So the different, the, uh, the, there's different divisions within what the sun is actually projecting. And so let me show you where these filters really are. So you understand how to either remove the filter or to clean the filter based on what it is that you can see as your preferences or what you've been choosing as preferences based on the filter or the eye in which that you're looking through. So the, uh, there's a picture here, it's called the filters between the absolute. And you have to see this picture. If you're on just line and you're listening to this, I guess you would have to be on live stream. And that's why I like live stream because it makes the person, if they're listening, have to be looking at the pictures here. So if you notice the second picture from the top that we're calling the filters between the absolute, you see the absolute out there and it's actually not the sun. <laughs> notice how within this chart, which was pulled from, um, from the piranhas, I believe, within this chart, you have the absolute out there even beyond the sun, but you see the sun is clearly some type of duplication of the absolute. So what they're telling you is, is about this, um, this um, as above, so below, micro macro cosmic nature of our entire universe, which is that basically your hand, is, your body is here. Your body, there's another Chinese art, is here. Your, uh, another body is here. So you, and then you have this whole body. So there's these multiple bodies that have basically the same geometry encased and stacked on top of this being in different formations, but still the same thing. It's the ultimate level of division. So, um, or maybe not the ultimate level. So what happens is, is that you can still see though, is what you are is an exploded sun. It, remember, sun's not male or female, so it does us no justice when we have them calling the sun after a, a male's name. And let me cut this camera on just so we have some, some HD feed, excuse me. It's no, um, it doesn't hurt us at all to push play on this camera. The way the system works is it actually streams, for those want, that want to know, it's streaming right through a camera and it's just streaming the image that is on the camera. So whether it's recorded or not depends on whether I push play, which I did now. So this may be a recording that people are able to look at later in HD like yesterday's, which I still have and I'm actually converting and going to upload. So what we're dealing with here is that if you have the absolute then, and then you have uh, your soul, which is basically the exploded version of the absolute, then the only thing between you and absolute, or the only uh, filters between you and absolute, or the only gates in between you and absolute, are what we call the planetary system. And this is why today I'm starting this, um, I would say, investigation on the moon. 
Now, of course, we've heard a lot of things about the moon, and of course, David Icke's dragged on and on about it being, you know, some type of reptilian craft, etc. But I think we have to go a little bit deeper into the entry of the moon and when that all took place, because uh, how we spin our time cycles, uh, our gravity, how big we are, how big other things are here, is now all dependent upon the moon. When before, if you look at ancient star charts, it doesn't note this moon in our system. And, and, and the reason why I'm investigating this now is in light of what I found out yesterday through, you know, continuously, as we call it, building the tower, which is talking to individuals that are also of, of, of like mind to, to continuously work our way out of this situation rather than stay in it. We came to the conclusion that obviously what is happening is in our realities, we're being pro projected refractions. And let me explain this. So if you have the absolute, uh, hold on for just a quick second for me. Um, air conditioner is not, it's hot. These lights are pretty hot in here, so I was like, man, I need a little bit of air or something in here. So, um, okay, so what you see here on this chart is that, now, how, well, how these planets are, are working is they become more or less the um, go-between between the original absolute meaning your absolute soul and this new physical being that you've taken on meaning that when the absolute chooses to disperse its seeds which is us the children we have to go through this phase of growing up to where we become the absolute this is what we talk about is all itself at the highest level of this you're everything so what happens is, and, and of course you end up in the, in the uh, when you graduate this, joining in on an entire uh, 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 collection of multiple beings that you have connection to and you have the energy to power being active and conscious in those experiences, okay? So let's not get ahead of ourselves here, but what you're dealing with with ap the absolute is so much energy that you have to have a governor as a child when you come as a small seed as a child you have to have a governor that converts that energy to you and this is why if you give the child something that is dangerous like you don't put a gun in a child's hand you don't put electricity in, in, in around a child and let the child put things in electricity sockets and the reason why is of course those kinds of things have so much power that it can actually affect the body. It can blow up the body even. So it's the same thing with the absolute. If a person is attempting to learn that they're everything, you can't tell them and teach them and show them all of that from their mind, body, and soul immediately or they just, pfft, that's it. So what we've been put in is we've been put in a system that actually basically begins to take off the governors as we have learned or we are ready for that to happen. So this is also why many people are working with two senses, three senses now rather than five is because more of their senses keep being removed. And this is of course happening in the physical reality and some of the choices that they're making, what they're choosing to eat and, 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 and uh, what they prefer and maybe they've shut down certain centers because of taking certain drugs so now they don't hear as well because of listening to concerts too loud with music that is highly distorted and non-harmonic. So what happens is, is that in reality you lose senses. So in a sense, <laughs> you're degrading or what's called de-evolution or de-evolving or um, dissension. Okay? So as it says in the ancient text, behold, we saw the ladder going up and down. Meaning that behold, we saw a spine is what they're saying, that the spine, of course, is the symbol for the ladder. And of course, as you go up the spine, then you get more into the subtle energy. So because they say we saw the ladder coming up and down, what it means is that we saw entities, high entities and low entities on the ladder. So this is also your state of consciousness. You can either choose to lose more sense senses and even get into the negatives, still working your job for the universe, but overall, as a being that can truly reason, why would you do that? Meaning that if you have the reason to begin to learn how to cycle energy and to distribute energy, why would you choose to remain stagnant on whether you're thinking as a high level or thinking the low level? So what this becomes for us is that it becomes the real knowledge of exactly how we're into this situation and how we can sometimes climb down ladders in this reality or we can actually climb up ladders in this reality. 
But still understand there is ascending and descending. Don't be fooled and not take responsibility and like a child, but be adept and take responsibility and say, I'm responsible for making sure that I expand into that next stage of existence because according to the reality that I'm on, I have individuals that are around me and also uh, individuals that are in authority or say they're in authority that are attempting to push me down into lower spaces that are actually available, lower states of consciousness, deafness, uh, blindness, sickness, all these different things are the manifestations of when your magnetic field is now non-harmonic, meaning something has intruded and unbalanced your, 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 uh, your uh, magnetic field. And the reason why you see it as a magnetic field is because a magnetic field has poles. Of course, with every magnet, there's a north and a south pole. So this is more of why we're configured as such. So let's continue with this now. We had stumbled upon something a while ago. And it was just fascinating with, uh, with understanding and realizing the information that it's possible that the shapes of the animal's eye, since we had already discovered that the, the shape of the eye is the portal you come through. Now, for in, those that are just tuning in, let me just explain this. And you see how humans have circular eyes. And what we call this womb is womb is made out of phi. Phi is the pentagram, also known as the perfect circle. So you have 72 degrees, which is the angle on a pentagram, times phi, which equals 360 degrees. This means the circumference of a circle is 360 degrees. And so our eyes come out at 360 degrees. So what happens is, is that um, when you have other kinds of uh, geometry, like if you notice, and let me uh, upload this picture here really briefly, I have it on the desktop, let's see here, oh, lovely, another, another screen, <laughs> I keep getting surprised by live stream every time I I look at the panel, it's always got something new. So let me, uh, oh, here it is, okay. So let me upload this image. Who knows where that, <laughs> where that screen came from? I'm, it's just funny. Okay, so what we're, what we're looking at here is eyes, and it's almost finished loading here. It's gonna take a second. Let me let it finish, um, just in case it starts messing with the bandwidth a little bit. But anyway, we'll keep going. So what I'm uploading here is I'm uploading the eyes of a couple of the, a few of the animals that we were taking a look at, especially with astral theology, meaning that in, in, uh, when you study the stars and you study astronomy or, or you know, some people that study astrology, you see that they always relate the stars to animals. The Chinese do it, so that's the indicator that has been going on for a long time because many of their systems have been up before a lot of this Western stuff. But of course the Westerns do choose to do it. We have zodiac signs and those zodiac signs are, um, are related to most, mostly animals such as uh, the Capricorn goat and the uh, Ursa Major, of course, is the, the bear. And so we have all of these different zodiac signs related to animals. So what is the connection? Why are the stars related to animals? And it's because the energies that are, that are needed and necessary in order to make wombs and to develop wombs, because there's more than just one ingredient, obviously, in a divided reality, are coming from the essence of these, these other beings. Now, these other entities that also have souls, like if you're in the physical reality and you have a cat next to you, you know the cat is thinking. And when you have animals and you see an ant even walking around on the ground and looking for food, it's animated, it's doing some level of thinking. And it's actually even doing that through fluid, by the way, but still see that with other animals, they have these different shaped eyes. So it makes us ask, where are the animals from? And so I'm giving you the answer today. What you have is with the absolute, then you have just as this chart shows as we were looking at earlier that you have all these planets in between. And what these planets in between are known as angels, also known as archons even. Because, because that's why every good angel had a bad angel, right? Like in all of the mysticism, you have, the Solomon says he has to have the other angel that thwarts the negative angel. And this is because the way it's working in, in, uh, in, in how we're getting the energy that projects this reality is it's, that interpretation is coming through something before it gets to us. And 
some people have to really, really start thinking about this because it's really hard to explain it per se, but to visualize it, which we definitely hope to do in a little bit and start to create videos that allow you to see this a lot better. But what happens is, is that if you have these things in between you and the absolute, which most people have set up as their, as their um, what they called, what they've given, or what we were talking about last night, what they've given their power over to. If you see most, a lot of people are the Christian, a lot of people are the, the Muslim, and a lot of people are this, uh, uh, or whoever, and they have this, this being that they say is the absolute, which is not true because they're really the absolute. But according to them, this being, whether it's Buddha or Krishna or whoever it is, is saying that they're the absolute, which cannot be. It cannot happen. This is how you would start to clog your filters and start seeing through Buddha's eyes rather than your own or seeing through Allah's eyes rather than your own. So what happens is, is that in, of course, in the beginning, just like if the child depends on the parents, this may be okay. But if you're seeking to move beyond this, if you're seeking to expand beyond the training wheels, then it's not okay. You now have to graduate beyond it. So when you have, let's say, Saturn in your field, and let's, this is a Judaistic person, or Jupiter, Saturn or Jupiter component, generally a Judaistic component, and you have now the interpretation of Saturn or Jupiter telling you what the absolute really is about. I am the God, there's no other God before me. So basically, I am the absolute, ab meaning father, soul meaning son, ab soul, you see? So I am the father, there's no other ones before me. Wait a minute, that's a filter. So what happened is, <laughs> If you notice that many of these entities are related to certain animals, so for instance with uh, Saturn and Jupiter, they're both related to serpents, and that's what we talked about yesterday is that the totem animal for Saturn and Jupiter is serpents, while like for Mars, the totem animal is the ram, okay? And so you do have individuals that look more from a warlike perspective to what the absolute is. The absolute is full courage and bravery and to die with honor. Okay, so Samurai, again, which Samuel is the angel of Mars. See, it all really connects, but of course you have to go over multiple levels of study, and this is what the Astro Quest is really about, is also getting all that information just right in front of you so you don't get all this disinformation of individuals that are still looking through filters about how they're interpreting what's going on in this reality. Of course, obviously, there is a cat thing slash snake thing going on on Venus. Obviously, with a, 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 a Neptune, there is a fish thing going on for real. And so what you have is you have, and, and then you have the physical forms of these animalistic energies residing and masquerading around the reality, whether it's just in an archetype or a story that's been passed around forever, but you have them still present. So when a person chooses to be quote unquote Christian, now they're only seeing through the eyes of Saturn, Neptune, and the moon. You see? So also, just how lenses work, a person can choose to put on different lenses. It's like a religious buffet or a gateway buffet, where the person chooses to install Visica on top of some of these geometries I can't even explain, on top of circle, you see? So, and this begins to emit how they act in the reality because remember, as we talked about a while ago, that your definition of soul or the source starts to define you. Meaning how you feel about the Most High, which I said is even beyond the name God, defines you. So if you're still stuck on God <laughs> or still stuck on some other name for God, then what happens is, is that you end up stagnant seeing things through another being's filters. So hopefully that becomes very clear to individuals as they continue to press, press on through this year because many people are already facing tests where they're being asked to utilize their own energy to get them through it. And what they're choosing to do is to go backwards to energies that they've been actually removed from and try to make and relive some, or, 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 or re-negotiate uh, uh, the, the spiritual contract, meaning that when some people get into trouble and, and it, when they're not in trouble, then they go and they're, then now they're, they're free and they're all about that they have all the power, etc. But when something start, crazy starts happening, then they're like, oh, let me call my God deity from the book and let me get back in touch with him or her because this thing is going. But you don't realize that the chaos that's around you is actually being caused internally and you could prevent it the damage control, of course, is now you have to deal with it, but you could prevent it if your spirit was in better shape. So that way, when your spirit has to deal with it, it doesn't have the, uh, an impediment, meaning that when your spirit faces a challenge of truth, 
to understand its stance and where it must be, which is at the absolute state. When something comes to it and says, I'm the absolute, it says, nay, <laughs> you're a liar and a deceiver. That's because these are the tests that are really coming to people. That's why they love to roll the Christian uh, 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 doctrines into real principles and then twist it all around later like the fish. Because what happens is, is that if your if your real principles to the world happen to be rolled up in some spiritual preference that you really don't prefer, then you miss the message entirely. Likewise, even if something that is damaging people the most, a.k.a. maybe a reptilian, and the individual chooses either to not get over the situation or to harp on the situation so much that they don't understand it, then they're stuck there. And now here's another thing. If a person chooses to only identify that part of the situation, let's say um, I think David Icke says he's moved on from that now, but let's just say the past David Icke always focusing on reptilians is only seeing and allowing other people to see the world through the reptile's eyes. So this is what I was also talking about as the waste of time because that's what these gates are. They're wastes of time. If you could get as an adept right to the absolute, why would you need a gate? So this is to in turn ask you spiritually, if you're spiritually intact, then why would you need any type of protection, etc.? You must not be spiritually intact because you don't even understand what it is that you don't have to have protection as the absolute. What is going to come against you? <laughs> so this is why the mind trick, and they say the Jedi mind trick, of course, Jedi is a name for uh, Egyptian priests. So uh, Jedi, D-G-E-D-I, something of that nature. Jedi mind trick. This is telling people that they need to depend on something and getting a superstructure modeled after you're de you depending on pretty much everything from power to light to TV to multiple dependencies to get you feeling scared and vulnerable in order to be juiced. So we stop the juicing. <laughs> now about the edge, because that's also what we deliver is we don't just uh, talk about the situation. I think we're also nearing the end of the call, which is amazing. It means we sped through this pretty fast. But we also want and we're going to probably go about 10 minutes over because we didn't uh, we didn't start exactly on time. Um, the edge, what happens here on earth is, is that we still had a plethora of things that are available to us that can give us that, that extra advantage of, of connection, can, that can really clean these filters and get them acting right. As I said, the, the good angel, bad angel, canceling each other out to realize, look, black one, white one, you are not colors. We're on a full spectrum thing. If we put both of you in a room together, you would cancel each other out in an arm wrestle. It's like watching the good angel wrestle the bad angel is like watching it just stay like this because the good and bad thing doesn't even really connect to higher levels of spirituality. That the good and bad is the disconnection. So when a person that also manifests is when a person is constantly at work and doing things making things better. They don't tend to see much of uh, or have an opinion much of what is going on because they're so busy, meaning that they don't have time to sit around and just talk about the situation and how bad it is. They're already in it dealing with situations and, and, and making good things happen in, in those situations and even benefiting from it. So remember, if you, if you find your body to be really dense, Look at the internet. Also, the manuals to these kits have been made available, meaning that the, the structure of how you take, you, you, would, you would cleanse your body. And then, of course, on the internet, there's, there's different ways of uh, going through this system. Some people have colon cleansing solutions. Some people have liver cleansing solutions. But what I'm talking about is the order, because remember, what you're looking at also on this chart will, get, will lend, lend you some deeper information about, okay, well, since these planets are inside of us and there are our eyes, and if their eye is, is basically, or the filter is clouded, then I don't see things properly. But basically now I'm constructed based on this division of entities that were birthed from the soul, because we were also birthed from the soul. So, so was Saturn, so was Jupiter. So were all of these essences that are inside of us. So what I really need to do now is I need to put these things in control. I I don't need to run away. Where am I going? How can you run away from yourself? So what happens is, is that someone must bring the entire temple to order. So that's why you see these hierarchies externalized because there's a hierarchy inside. And what sits over that is choice, your choice. You choose to whether or not you go reptilian, Saturnalian. You choose whether or not you go uh, uh, Martian ram war god. You choose if you, if you go uh, uh, deep bottom of the sea, sea god. 
and, and with the trident ruling over underworlds. You decide that. So what we're also showing is, is that it's highly possible since you have these chakras that you made these choices already before. These are lessons or experiences that you've already had. So why, like I said, the reptitious reptilian wants to go and live the same experience again. This is when you make mistakes and you keep making the same mistake. You want to live the same result of that mistake over and over again then. That's what you're, you're, that's what you're sending and programming into the universal bio supercomputer. Organic, okay? So I want to tell you also about uh, um, some of the supplements here since today's call was superfoods and of course we have the acai berry and we have some grape seed extract and this is what I was meaning by this is the first level of superfoods introduced to mankind and of course the goji berries and um, those are awesome I mean again the body tends to have to be very subtle to feel the energy that corresponds to many of these supplements in deeper meditations of course you get tapped into more and that's really also remember how Ayurveda was born is that these men and women were so tapped in and tuned into their body they can eat a leaf and then start feeling it go through different parts of the body and they could feel and know exactly where it went to that's the, the level of energy and the, the type of connection that we had before with our body so remember this didn't always this wasn't always bad as people call it. The other thing is, is that it, this way of controlling the fluids within the body, because remember, as I said, even the ant's brains is a fluid. So there's all of these micro fluids in your body that can do many different things, but the way to control them, and that's why there was a, a lot of work done on this, especially within the Eastern teachings, is through the deeper tapping into the body and, under, and feeling your fluids move around. Now, for those who may think that I'm, you're way too far away from doing that, I say think again because you already do it with one main fluid, which is your urine. If you, if you um, need to urine, when you go sit on the, on the t toilet, you say, hey, you send the thing in your mind, okay, I'm ready. And then the, the, valve, the valve opens and then you start urinating. So all the fluids in your body, you have the ability to be able to control them like that. So you say, oh, okay, I need more me melatonin for this to, to, to go completely through this experience. Or I need more di uh, dimethyltryptamine to, to go through this experience. And you're saying this into your brain. And so you're able to release your own endorphins. Now, of course, we do this with happiness. And that's why I was saying that we're operating at times like computers waiting to receive a program because something has to happen in order for you to be happy. You can't just be happy. You see the problem? So those who have already emancipated the entire structure, they're happy all the time. They don't need like a carrot in front of them. They don't need you to do something for them. They don't need all of that because that puts them back in a state of needing something that is already there. So peep out the knowledge here. It's really about how you're going to get to the next level because it actually involves you getting there when you're ready and when you want to, not when someone else says that they're coming back and coming to get you and then you're able to enjoy it. Second thing here is, uh, or third thing is um, the biochemical cell salts because as you see here the chart now, some have talked about this chart and, we, and possibly moving uh, some of the stuff around only uh, basically back one click because some are saying some of the days fall a little bit closer to what one of some of the modern calendars fall. But of course, that is where the experiment comes in. It's not like we're going to um, be able to deliver all the highest levels of knowledge without you experiencing it. So what happens, especially since the biochemical cell salts are so mild, you definitely find, find the cell salt that you're actually depleted in, but you also read about the cell salts, and we've included three free books, really the top, on cell salt uh, information, and then you start to pinpoint and diagnose yourself, and then you start to cure, cure your, in many cases, hereditary ailments. Many people that were experiencing hereditary ailments, meaning it was passed down to you from your ancestors, that they've been able to, to fix those. And the reason is because, as you notice, the biochemical cell salts, they function on the, the planetary systems in the months of the week or the months of the uh, year and also your, um, your own personal system and your birthday, etc. So what happens with that is the same way in which we arrived into the reality, meaning the same way in, in which that we, we came into this existence, we have now isolated, which is a cellular level, by the way, that, that's why cell salts really work. What cell salts are is that they're, when you take a human cell and you, you basically uh, superheat it, there's, it burns, once it's burned to ash, then there's only 12 cells that remain there. 
And um, that's what the biochemical cell salts are because they've been able to identify, especially in places like Germany, that all ailments that a person generally experiences is because of deficiency within, biochem which, within their biochemical cells. Um, in addition to that, even healing bones and things like that have been done through biochemical cell salts. And in places that are not really looking to benefit or countries that are not really looking to benefit off their medical system, most of the time the doctor uh, prescribes something like biochemical cell salts to fix the ailment, not only because it, it will remove the ailment generally on a permanent level, but also they're very inexpensive. So the person's not attempting to, uh, uh, to capitalize on you. And I believe that uh, even within one of these bottles, as you can see, there's actually 12 there. There's 150 capsules, or 100, actually 125 capsules of each of these supplements, which are just placed under the tongue. No placebo, meaning that don't go and try to pop all of these uh, biochemical cell salts or more than two or three because you're like, okay, this is just a little pill that tastes a little bit like sugar. It's not a sugar pill and you'll experience that if you know, your nasal passage locks up or something like that because you've taken too much of one of the substances. So definitely use your adeptness with this. It's not a, a game of you just taking everything to figure out what's gonna happen to you, but it's definitely something that you can start to pinpoint what's going on inside of your system because it takes that kind of um, uh, attention. And remember, no one's gonna be able to really do in a certain degree, especially with stuff like this and the cleansing, anything for you as far as they can get the information to you like I'm doing now, but as far as how you administer, to this, administer this to yourself, you know you. We can ask, answer general questions about it. However, you know what your, your ailments are, what your impediments are, what your strengths and weaknesses are. And as I mentioned that, I also want to let people know for those who are asking in their mind, well, why do we even have these kind of impediments? And it's because of the distance between us and the absolute. That's kind of can be seen on a spiritual level, but you can also see that on a physical level because the distance between us and, and the sun, there's these things in between us and the light or the information, light codes coming from the sun. So how that ends up manifesting in the physical reality is that when you are conceived, this means that when, you, when your star appears in the cosmos, it's a certain amount of light beaming on your permanent star in the cosmos. And so wherever it's the face of that, meaning the actual side that is exposed to the sun, is your strengths. The, the part that is not exposed to the sun is your weakness. And so this is why some people have respiratory problems in certain zodiacs. Some people have psychological problems in certain zodiacs. And this is why you can strengthen yourself by just building the energy that is associated with that zodiac. In addition, I, the investigation on the moon is really going to ensue in the, it, only because now we're not getting... Uh, we're not just getting this reflection of the stars that are actually affecting us on a certain, to a high level, but more so the moon. And, and the obvious reason why is if you look in the sky, all the stars are obviously at a greater distance while the moon is like right up on us. And so what this affects, what this does is in effect, it hacks the moon and that's, I mean, it hacks the sun. And this is why we see from, we see the light of the sun and even the light of the other planets because of the sun. So this means that they're reflectors that also connects with why they're like go-between or filters. So if you can really, really see what's going on, because of course it takes you to remove yourself from the system in order to really be able to see the true potential of all your abilities, you can still see in the physical reality that the moon stimulates a lot of whether a person goes into more of the positive or negative side of themselves. And because positivity and negativity, negativity or white and black are also two extremes that you still will get people at extremes. And so some, some people call that like the fanatic. This is where it's a church person, extremely positive. Sister Betty can really go, but she's a fanatic. And when the moon gets more full, she even becomes more of a lunatic. You see what I mean about the fanaticism of what she believes and she's ready to do more and ready to march down the street and tell all these people, you see? So what happens is, is that it's about balance. It's not about per se which one of these, uh, 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 which one of these uh, mirrors that we wanna pick up. It's about how many have we already picked up and are they working in conjunction with each other? Um, the final thing is you see we've, we've uh, launched, uh, actually hold on real quick, let me, before I say the final thing, um, Check on the Skype. 
Okay, someone asks here, um, can I talk about parallels between regression and the Christian scripture? If you backslide, you invite seven more demons to you. What does the number seven have to do with power of regression, uh, assentation and progression, etc.? cetera? Okay, um, this question is also really built for another conversation because we will be getting into the, to the cult nature of letters and numbers. But uh, just to, to tell you how it works before, uh, how it really works just as brief as possible, the parallel between regression in the uh, Christian scripture and the number seven. What happens in the Christian scripture where it talks about backsliding, and I actually talked about this even the other day with a friend, is that first of all, the ladder of light, as they're calling it, which is set up in seven stages in this program that we're in, because you see there's seven days of the week. There's tw seven, time, seven times four is 28. There's supposed to be, tw and to these people who believe this particular system, believe that there's really 28 days stages to the moon. Some people believe there's 29. And you get a lot of this, first of all. You get a lot of people say, it's 365. And then you get another group that says, it's 366. And see, this is the confusion that uh, Willem Swart had pointed out that if, even when you're reading tarot, you have to understand why two is there because of one. Three is there because of two. Four is there because of three. And so if you don't understand how they connect, then there becomes this huge disconnection. So what happens in, uh, in spiritual progression is as you're climbing this ladder of lights, meaning basically you're going through an occultation with all these different spiritual energies, the last one they say being seven or the one who has all of the knowledge, then on, on a physical plane, what they say is, is that if you reach this, it, what happens is, is that when you're on a top, when you're climbing the first step of the ladder, which they say is actually the moon, that's why most people are stuck on the lunar traditions. When you're climbing the steps of the ladder, if you fall from a lower step, then it doesn't hurt as much as if you fall from a higher step. Just like in the physical reality, you climb all the way up on a ladder, you fall from the top, you're going to hurt yourself a lot more than if you climb only three steps on the ladder and then you fail. So how this works is, is that if you climb any steps on the ladder and then you fall, aka backslide, then you will actually go here. You don't go back to the even point. You go back to neg so if you're on negative if you're on positive two, and you're on the, let's say this second initiation, quote unquote, or, or second part of the matrix uh, 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 series, then you end up in negative two. So what, what they're saying is, is that even a person that understands, as the person is asking here, the, uh, the, the person who is now claiming to be in the league with the, the Jesus Club, which is, of course, where the scripture ends up going, is a threat basically to anyone that is in the, the club Christian that if you uh, 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 break any laws or rules, then you're going to end up seven times worse, meaning that you'll end up, if you're on negative, uh, if you're on positive seven because we've, we've chosen you, and then you mess up, then you'll be on negative seven. So, and again, be, the reason why, now let's explain again, why the number seven becomes so important in the Christian literature is because it is a symbol of support. The, the seven, also known as a cane, is a symbol of support for older or, or, or um, individuals who need help. So originally this word cane, when you trace it, trace it through etymology or the cane that an old person may hold to hold them up, which is either in the shape of a J or a L, which is actually the same letters, were used as a, excuse me, I just lost my video here. What, what it was used for is, is it was used for in the, in the physical reality, one of the first physical entities that arrived here, aka the king or kin, okay? And so the king or the kin or Cain arrives here first, according to this structure of knowledge, and becomes a support system for all the children that this king has in the world. So for this particular structure of, of belief, because remember, the, over on the other side of the world, they believe that Itza and, and the Mayan princess and the rest of them are their king. And so that's who they're denoting as the system that they're using. And so when in the Mayan system, they give their, uh, um, uh, their deities their name eight, which is uh, uh, um, also what you see with the, the, the geometry in which they're using, because really they're worshiping Venus. So... What happens is, is that in any belief system, they've already taken upon themselves certain numbers. Mainly, they try to take the ones of power. And then those who have already uh, um, come into the knowledge of how the lunar cycles work and how the solar cycles work, then they tend to choose the numbers that are more associated with that. 
So what you're dealing with in, 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 um, in this um, entire structure of the numbers, and this is also why you have to realize that focusing on all the numbers and all the names and all that so much is what? Seeing through filters. Now you're seeing it only through the eyes of this. And while you're viewing it, there's nothing wrong with you viewing it, basically picking up that knowledge and information and scanning it completely, getting everything that you need and saying, okay, that's seven, where is eight? And then after you get that knowledge information you need, okay, that's eight, I'm ready for nine. And then you pass through all of these channels and continuously you're layering yourself, getting yourself stronger, building more energy and more experience in the reality. So that way, when things come about that you've already seen before, then you're able, because you've already seen it through basically an astral eye, you can see the future, then you know how to steer around certain things that you don't want to repeat. You see, the, the perfect circle, and we're just going to say this and now in the conversation, what the perfect circle is really about is it's about you making all the choices that you already know are the right choices. Then what happens in your course is that you actually start to steer a circle that can generate energy. You're not whopped. Now, get the, the connection between your magnetic field and the wobble on Earth and why most people use the right hand. So this means that the person is in intense imbalance. So they're spinning like this. They're whopping. They're in an orbit, or as it's called, an or. Or means gold bit, meaning you got a gold bit in your mouth. And you're, pull, you're pulling, you're generating energy, which is like a, a, basically now a cow or uru, the first man with a bit in his mouth or her mouth yoked together with the her, meaning that generally the, all these, the beginning beings obviously were androgynous when splitting up happened, you had to be yoked to someone. Now when you got the orbit in your mouth or the gold bit and then now working inefficiently, which is what most people are doing in the reality, working for all these different organizations that are only furthering their doom. Look, it, it's not even about money and if you really think about it right off the bat because you realize that the whole root to all this is that people need to get more money so they can buy more things. But then they must work for the companies that build those things in order to buy more things. So where is it going to end? As long as there's people that need the money to buy more things and then there's people that are actually building more things to buy, it's an endless knot. And this is why this kind of alchemical knowledge and the knowledge about numbers about how, and how they work in the physical reality do equal an individual that is extremely adept in the physical reality, which is why, why, why you can give yourself the explanation of why negative people prosper. And it's because they understand the, the system of the physical reality, but the spiritual reality, they're totally defunct. And the reason why you understand that is because if they were adept in the spiritual reality, they would have already climbed and learned how to cycle the ladder. Instead, what they did do is they got stuck and lodged in some place begging for, even, not say, even though they're not saying it verbally or not saying it through their actions, but begging for an individual to come and shine a light upon them. And this is why they always lean to these kind of scriptures of someone being able to return that is actually going to have the power and the abilities enough to actually remove them from their problems. Uh, final thing here. Uh, I did post on the site today that we're actually going to start offering Alpha Brain. And I've tried to supplement out myself, and I was actually impressed by its ability to do exactly what it says it does, which is really hard to get these days. I did my own investigation also on the natural ingredients that were included, especially since some of the ingredients had more of a technical name. But I really want to say congratulations to those guys for actually embarking into a field of actually raising consciousness through the supplements that we have available in our world that are natural. So that's all I really have to say about that. Like I said, just check out the Alpha Brain post if you want to get information on that. I'll probably send out a blast today so you can uh, go ahead and receive it. Um, that's going to be it for today. Of course, we'll probably be returning on Monday. Of course, to, this weekend is our off week. I, I really wanted to also tell people the reason why I've started to put some of these days off, especially like the weekend, is that people, you need to get out. <laughs> like you got to go and allow this stuff to soak in and to really, really expand yourself. Like if, let's say for instance, if I did this thing where I could stay on the internet all forever, would that benefit you? No, it's only important for me to get here, tell you a few things that you, most people say, I already knew that, I'm just glad it was put together that way and 
refresh my memory. And so now you have that to go and do something with. So instead of actually sitting around and, and, and waiting for the next broadcast, especially uh, this weekend, since there, there won't be one until next Monday, you can get out and start to really experience life and see what this whole thing is about. And remember, the glass now is half full because what they've been exclaiming to you about what is really possible out in the higher spaces of your existence that you may have started to give, give up hope on and think doesn't really exist, actually really does. The only problem is you're still seeing it through the eye of an individual or a being or an entity who cannot see. Now listen, the TV even, the programming that comes across this TV daily, and they, that's what I would call it, the TV is the eye. Even our parents and our great-grandparents, when they see the TV, oh, that's the eye of the devil. And then on the movie, of course, the Heliophant film, you see the, the TV being implemented as the reptilian eye, meaning what they choose to project through this portal makes people believe that this is actually what's going on. As of course, we're not syndicated, we're on live stream, so even David Icke's not on real TV. So that's why they control TV the way they do, because that is, what the, that is the now portal that people are choosing to go through. Now, if you understand that knowledge deeply, then you'll understand the cathode ray tube, which is the tube that is um, a hexagon. And then you'll also understand the, uh, a lot of the, uh, the aspect ratios, a 1080, which is basically three times around a circle. So all the different definitions that are being used projecting through these gates are basically giving you the definition, like telling you what the absolute is really about. Now it's high time for you to actually experience that for yourself. So I want to say wholeness and balance vibration to everyone. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for all your support. My name is James Evans Bomar III. I'm the developer of the resistance and the author of the code of the matrix wholeness.